The bakers of Weber's Bread present your all-star Western theater. Recorded earlier for release at this time. Drifting along, singing a song under a western moon. From Hollywood comes your all-star Western theater. Starring America's great western singers, Boy Willing and the riders of the Purple Sage. Bringing you the music, the stories, and the spirit of the great open spaces. And now, the riders of the Purple Sage. Deep within my heart lies a melody, a song of old San Antonio. Where in dreams I live with a memory beneath the stars all alone. It was there I found beside the Alamo, enchantment strange as the blue of above. Moonlit paths that only she would know Still hears my broken song of love Moon in all your splendor and only my heart Call back my rose, rose of sad and tone Lips so sweet and tender like petals falling apart Speak once again of my love, my own old broken song Empty words I know still live in my heart all alone For that moonlit path by the Alamo and rose, my rose of San Antonio. <laughs> Moon in all your splendor and only my heart Call back my rose, rose of sand and foam Lips so sweet and tender like petals far apart Speak once again of my love, my own old broken song Empty words I know still live in my heart all alone All that moonlit pass by the Alamo And rose, my rose of sand and tone Rose of sand and friends, a familiar song is something that gets to be a part of you, whether you're a singer or a listener. And if that familiar song was taken away, life would lose something, just as it gains something when the song is heard. Here, then, is a new number that we hope will become one of your favorites. Lay your little head on my shoulder. Lay your little head on my shoulder. Brush away the tears from your eyes Love like ours could never grow colder I'm sorry that I made you cry You will soon forgive and forget what they say Someday you'll forget all those lies Lay your little head on my shoulder Brush away the tears from your eyes Brush away the tears from your eyes. 
It's nice to reminisce about the good old days when every man carried a six-shooter and every woman made her own soap and baked her own bread. But few of us would go back to those good old days if we could, especially the women folks. Take the matter of baking bread, for example. Think of the labor involved in baking enough bread to last a hungry family a whole week. Compare that to the convenience of being able to buy fresh Weber's bread every day at your nearby grocery store. And what good bread Weber's is. Far better than home-baked bread of the old days. Fine-textured, flavorful, and rich in the vitamins natural to whole grains. When you buy your next loaf of Weber's bread in the blue gingham wrapper, feel the soft freshness. Smell that fresh-baked fragrance. Then enjoy the better-than-homemade flavor of good Weber's bread. Somebody heard them sing it before, somebody asked them to sing it again. And here it is, Adobe Hacienda. In my Adobe Hacienda, there's a touch of Mexico. Every evening seems so sweet In my adobe hacienda Life and love are more complete of the Purple Sage to tell us another of their adventures in the West. This week they've called their story The Big Holdup. The land of Mesquite is also the land of the sun, and the sun makes a man indolent. His intentions, more than often, may be the very best, but it's easier to put things off than to do them at once. That's why the shacks, spaced so far apart in the land of Mesquite, look weather-beaten and run down. And that's why Buck Farrell hasn't a wife. Ah, but there's the story. The riders of the Purple Sage had rested overnight in the cow town called Sandyville. They'd hit the trail, then met a stranger, and afterwards turned about, heading for the shack where Buck Farrell lived all alone. Johnny, Al, we've been poking along till our horses are fresher than they were at sunrise. Let's hightail it. This business with Buck Farrell can't wait. Horses will be all right here. Buck! Oh, Buck! Hey, Buck! Wake up! Buck, your whole life is ruined. Yeah, what's the trouble, you hombres? Life's over for you, Buck. A blight settled down on your love. No. Buck, coming along the trail just now, we met a rider... Talk about a handsome caballero. He was it. He must have been rich, too. Did you notice the silver on his saddle for him? He wanted to know where Kitty Faust lives, Buck. Kitty? My Kitty? Your Kitty, Buck. A handsome, rich... Oh, a relative, that's what. He's probably one of Kitty's relatives. I'm afraid not, Buck. We might as well come right out with this boy. This guy said Kitty had promised to marry him. Well, she... she... 
Oh, that's unfair. Oh, why, I've been thinking of marrying Kitty myself. For five years, I've been thinking of... I reckon this hombre's got a priority, Buck. Yes? A priority? What, what's that? Well, it seems like he was uh, carrying on a correspondence with Kitty up until about six years ago. He wrote a letter then asking her to marry him and never got an answer until just now. She'd written one all right, but it got lost or something, and the letter just came. She accepted him, and he's riding out to claim it. Oh, there's no justice in the world. You didn't tell him where Kitty lives, did you? Well, Buck, we don't like to lie. But on the other hand, we don't like to see anybody get married either. Marriage is against our principles. We compromised, Buck. We told him Kitty wasn't living with her aunt anymore. We told him to come here. Here? My rival is coming here? You can give him the right directions yourself if you want to. Or run him out of the country, whichever you like. Yeah, we wash our hands of the whole affair. We don't want anything to do with romance. Well, hiya, Buck. I see your handsome caballero rival didn't plug you after all. Johnny, boy, I'm glad I found you. I gotta talk to somebody. Oh, what a terrible day. Let this be a lesson to us. You see what luck can do to a fellow? I seen this hombre uh, coming toward my place, and I, well, I didn't know what to do. If I told him Kitty had smallpox, he'd want to send out a doctor. If I told him she was flying about in heaven with the angels, he, he'd want to visit her grave. A uh, woman sure causes trouble. Sure does. Look at Buck's eyes, how dull they are. In either yeah. case, I'd be caught. So I told him the truth. I told him where Kitty's living. Only I directed him so he'll take the long way around. What's the sense of that, Buck? Well, it'll be late this afternoon before he gets there. And by that time, maybe we can do something about it. What do you mean, we? Johnny and Al and I haven't got anything to do with this. Well, I thought we could ride to her house, and I'd tell Kitty this hombre ain't what he pretends to be. I'd tell her he's changed since he knew her, and that actually he's the worst bandit in the territory. I right, tell her, boys, and all you'd have to do is just back me up. He wants us to lie, Johnny. Yeah. Buck, we can't do that. We're not going to damage a man's reputation. Or get ourselves involved with romance, oh, either. Oh, for the sake of our friendship, just come along, will you? You don't have to say a word. Just be there. Mm, well... For the sake of justice. Why, I've been meaning to ask Kitty to marry me for the last five years. I just didn't get around to it, that's all. Boy, a thing like this is liable to break up Buck and Kitty. You're right, Al. We'd be doing Buck a good time. We're against romance. Well, right now we are, anyway. Ever since we spent all our money on those three girls that went home from the dance with three other guys. Yeah, what a dirty trick. All right, Buck, we'll go. But you'll have to do all the talking. We'll be with you, but that's as much as we'll do. Not only that, Kitty, but he defied the law in other ways, too. Why, he struck terror to the hearts of the whole countryside. Well, mm-hmm. you don't say, Bob. I'm told he wears a necklace made from the ears of his victims. Oh, it's awfully nice of you to tell me these things. Oh, would you boys like some cake and a nice cool glass of cider, boy? No, thanks, Kitty. A man can change a whole lot in six years, Kitty. Al, I know you would. Well, no. Why, he's hunted by every sheriff in the country. A price is on his head. Johnny, you'd like a piece of cake. Well, I might. Kitty, you've got to pay attention to me. I've taken a great deal of trouble to warn you against Tim Carnegie. Who? Warn me against who? Why, Tim Carnegie. Tim! Oh, I knew you wasn't listening. He'll be here in any minute. Fuck! Have you been talking about Tim all this time? I certainly have. He's a killer, a thief, a robber. Well, he'll be here any minute. Well, thank you, Buck. Thank you for telling me. You better run along now. All right, but don't open your door to him. Come on, boys. Oh, sure. Sure, Buck. Don't even talk to him. Well, so long. Goodbye, Buck. Goodbye, boy. Goodbye, goodbye. Well, she took that very well, boys. Now, let's go away for a couple of hours just to give her a chance to throw him out. And then I'll come back. Now, wait a minute, Buck. You've got to stick with me for a little while. I, I might even get around to proposing to Kitty when I go back. I'm in that kind of a mood. And if I do, we'll celebrate. Is that you, Buck? Yeah. Home kind of early, aren't you? Are you engaged to be married? Engaged? 
You think I'd ask a woman to marry me when she's sitting beside another hombre all evening, a running her fingers through his hair? Was Tim there? You mean she let him in after all you told her about him? He was there, all right. He's a dashing figure in her eyes since I told her he was an outlaw. He's a man of adventure. She calls him a naughty boy. She asks to see the necklace made of ears. She clicks her tongue and wonders what she'll ever do with him. Boy, ain't that a woman for you. Sure is. Yeah, and him. He ain't even got the decency to confess he's a law-abiding citizen. He just sits there listening to her coo. And then promises he'll try to do better if she'll use her influence. Yeah, he ought to get married. He ought to have to suffer. That... Well, I've fixed him. She'll be cooing on somebody else's shoulder before the week's out. What do you mean, Buck? Well, if it takes an outlaw to make Kitty skittery, then I'll be the greatest outlaw of all time. Easy, Buck. Boy, what a woman won't do to a man. There's a big dance going to be held in town tonight. Everybody from this part of the state will be there. I got a few of the boys to go around saying I'm going to hold up the place as a joke. What do you mean, hold it up as a joke? So Kitty will think I'm a bigger outlaw than Tim. Folks will give me their rings and watches and money, because they'll know I'm joking. Everybody will know that, except Kitty and Tim. How will they? Well, because I sent some of the boys around to tell them. And I said you'd guarantee that I'd give the money back, boy. I'd guarantee? Well, I said for him to tell folks that you give your word to be responsible in case anything happened and I didn't return their stuff tomorrow morning. Oh, but nothing will happen, boy. Why, nothing could happen. I better get inside now and pull a hold up, boy. Look here, Buck. You got the wrong idea about women. I have, eh? Well, I seen what I seen. And if it takes an outlaw to make a woman coo, then Kitty will coo to me. Now, you just let me loose. You have no business working our names into this, though. Loose. I'm going in there. I've got two fellas who pretend to struggle with me. I'm supposed to tap them on the head with my pistols, and they'll fall to the floor. Well, I may even have to shoot a few times, too, so, so don't worry if you hear shots. Buck, come back here. Stop the music! All right, put your hands in the air. This is a hold-up. Silence, woman. Anybody who lowers his hands will have his scalp added to the collection my horse wears as a blanket. Give me your money and your jewelry, and no false moves. Is that you, Buck? Boy, where have you been all day? What have you been hiding in the bushes for? Something happened last night that I didn't count on. Where's the stuff you stole? You were supposed to give it back this morning. Well, somebody reported a robbery, and the sheriff doesn't know it's a joke. He's out with a posse looking for me. I can't give the stuff back. No, but you can ride into town and surrender and explain it was all a joke. You think the sheriff would believe that? Besides, Kitty'd hear about it, and she'd think I was a sissy compared to Tim. Yeah, we're sure better off being woman haters, Johnny. Boy, I wish you boys would do something for me. Take the loot back and give it to the people I stole it from. Us? You want us to give the loot back? Why, sure. That would... We don't dare go into town, Buck. It's not just the sheriff who's looking for us. It's everybody. Certainly. We were supposed to have given our word that the holdup was a joke and the stuff would be returned this morning. Folks are ready to shoot us on sight. Well, they wouldn't even bother to tell us to raise our hands. Buck, where's the loot? Oh, in a burrow just behind that pile of brush. Then get it. As soon as the sun goes down, we'll sneak into town and leave it by the post office where it'll be found. Yeah, but Kitty, what'll Kitty think? She can think anything she pleases, but I've had enough of this. We don't like dodging sheriffs, especially when we're innocent. Now, wait, boy. you got a great idea. Kitty will hear about the loot being found. She'll think I'm a robber just for the fun of robbing. Boy, I'll be a more romantic figure than ever. Boy, everything is fine now. <laughs> Boys, I'm sure going to ask you to the wedding. Why, without any question, Kitty will think this hombre is just a poor imitation of me. Talk less. Somebody will hear you. Yeah, let's leave the loot in the doorway. Somebody will be sure to find it there. Shoot! They've seen us. Run! Pick up the loot and run for your lives! Get to the horses! Run for your lives! Look, fellas, 
Look, without knowing what I did, I rode to Kitty's place. Without knowing what you did, you got us in a lot of trouble. I must be a romantic figure to Kitty now. She saw me rob the dance. She knows the sheriff is looking for me. Wait, she's probably dying to see me right now. Buck, this is no time to... With so many people after me, this may be the last chance I'll ever have of seeing her. What if some of the sheriff's men are waiting inside for you, though? That's right, Buck. They could have staked out the place. Well, you knock at the door, boy. Al and Johnny crowd around it, and I'll stand to one side. You forgot something. The sheriff is looking for us, too. I'm knocking. I hope the sheriff is here. Then we can either clear this thing up or go to jail. I'm tired of being hunted by the law. Boy. Kitty. Al, Johnny, what a nice surprise to see you again. And especially now that you're alone. Not in the company of that ill-mannered barbarian. Ill-mannered barbarian? Fuck. Holding up the dance. A common outlaw. Why, if Tim... Oh, you didn't know. I'm hiding Tim from the sheriff. He's here with my aunt and me. If Tim hadn't promised me never to use a gun again, Buck wouldn't have left that dance alive. Kitty, what are you saying? Buck. Buck, you get right out of here. Go on now before I call Tim. You ill-mannered barbarian. Ill-mannered barbarian. Tim is a romantic figure, a man of adventure. Yet when I do what he's supposed to have done, I'm an ill-mannered... Buck, what are you doing? Kitty, Kitty, come back here. I'll show her. Come back here and bring that outlaw with you. Buck, I thought I told you to Woman, get out. Woman, put your hands in the air. Stop this foolishness. Put your hands in the air. Kitty, what? What? Yours, Kitty. too. Put your hands in the air, too. Oh, I don't know what's the matter with him, Tim. Boy, can't you voice to... There's something I want to know, Tim. And tell the truth of poor Kitty. Are you the adventurer, the outlaw you pretend to be? Either way, he loses, Johnny. If he says no, Kitty gets sore at him. He says yes, yeah. Your last chance, Tim... Are you what you pretend to be? Of course I am. Aha. Uh -huh. Kitty, last night is a joke, which everyone knows. I agreed to haul up the dates. It was just for a joke. I promised to return the loot this morning. But while I was trying to return it, a real outlaw, an ill-mannered barbarian of an outlaw, held Foy, Johnny, Al, and me up at the point of a gun and took everything away. Well, you can't accuse you me of... You must have done it. There's no other bandits around here. And you admit you're one. Well... Boy, hold him there. Al, Johnny, keep a close guard. I'm going for the sheriff. This man deserves to be put in jail. Back already? Let me in, boy. The sheriff's on his way. Excuse me a minute, Kitty. I'll let him in. Ah, boy. The sheriff is coming. They understood about the holdup being a joke. Now, if you'll hand Tim over... Tim? The ill-mannered barbarian. Why, Tim left some time ago, Buck. What? We knew you weren't serious about having him locked up, and as soon as you'd gone, he broke down and confessed to Kitty that he wasn't a robber at all, just a rich rancher like he'd always been. Well, but... But, uh, of course, Kitty couldn't stand the sight of him any longer for being such a pretender. Ah. And, of course, she can't stand the sight of you either. Hmm? You said a pretender held you up and took the loot away. Well, I... I Boy, I... you promised to come back and sing for me. You and the boy. You, you... You... I guess you'll have to excuse me, Buck. Kitty's... But you said... And Johnny said it. And Al, you wanted no part of any romance. Oh, Johnny and Al and I are just... Uh, singing to her, sort of soothing her troubles away. Now that she's so disappointed in you and Tim. Wait, you snake! Oh, boy! Yes, Kitty? You'll have to excuse me, Buck. We'll discuss this another time, when Kitty feels better and doesn't need company so much. Well, Buck certainly doesn't know much about women, and Foy and the riders of the Purple Sage weren't much help. The bakers of Weber's bread now don't pretend to know all about women either, but they do know all about the kind of bread women want. Dependably fresh, tasty, and nutritious. Energy-rich and flavor-rich. Good bread. In short, Weber's bread. Weber's is fine-textured for good, good-morning toast. It's a mealtime, snack-time, and anytime favorite with the whole family. Try a loaf soon. 
Look for the fresh, tender loaf in the blue and white gingham wrapper. That's Weber's Bread. When the great book of Western songs is finally compiled, it will be filled with music that's alive with the real spirit and traditions of the West. And in it, you'll be sure to find this song, Old Spanish Trail, which the riders of the Purple Sage sing for you now. Let me tell you a tale of the old Spanish trail. She and I used to ride side by side down the old Spanish trail. Desert stars high above seem to say fall in love. So we talked of a June honeymoon on the old Spanish trail. One night I was passing the cantina That night she was in somebody else's arms Have I seen her since then? Only now and again together they ride side by side down the old Spanish trail. Well, that about closes up our all-star Western theater for this time, friends. Before we go, we'd like to thank Gene Bates and Joe Duvall for helping us tell our story. This is Foy Willing speaking for Al Sloy, Scotty Harrell, and Johnny Paul, the writers of the Purple Sage, saying so long and good luck to all of you. Drifting along, singing a song. From Hollywood, you've heard your all-star Western theater, a V.M. Bear production starring America's great Western singers, Foy Willing and the writers of the Purple Sage. The script was by Ray Wilson, direction by Scott Farnworth. This is Terry O'Sullivan speaking. The All-Star Western Theater came to you by transcription. Listen again next week and every week at this same time for your All-Star Western Theater, which came to you from Columbia Square. <laughs>